Hi everyone, I am here at Inevitable Brewing Company and I am so excited to interview the owners and find out a little bit more about their story. They recently opened in the location of the Old Nutmeg Brewery, but they are not affiliated. It is brand new management, brand new beers, and amazing new food. I can't wait, let's go check it out and find out a little more about their story. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Kayla Schluter and I am a local real estate agent with Remax Results and the Locker Home Group. If you've never seen my channel, I love learning all about the South Metro. So let's go check out this new craft brewery. Hi, my name is Richard Stein. I am one of the owners and brewers of Ineffable Brewing Company in Burnsville, Minnesota. So, uh, opening and owning a brewery was always part of the plan, we, or it was a goal, you could say. It was a, an idea or a dream that we had had. During the first shutdown, or the, you know, during the pandemic last year, our uh, head brewer, Steve and I, we worked together at a previous brewery, LTD and Hopkins. Uh, we were just having a conversation, we heard some rumors that some places were closing and we were kind of curious as to who was going away and started looking around. Uh, found an ad for a brewery that was for sale in the Twin Cities. It was really vague, but just kind of, you know, what it was or, you know, the size, what it featured, so on and so forth. Uh, I started doing some investigating. I had worked in Burnsville for a number of years before this uh, at a previous job, so I knew the area. and kind of reverse engineering the information that I had. I figured out that it was in Burnsville, so I knew there was only one place. Uh, I decided for fun, hey, we were gonna pursue it, just kind of see what it was, or, you know, worst case scenario, it was a learning opportunity for, for next time, so to say. Uh, met the people that were selling this place, kind of got to know it a little bit, uh, fell in love with a lot of the equipment they had in the brewery behind us, and uh, that kind of sealed the deal once you got to look at the space, and it's a great location, not to mention the equipment. It's really, it's set up very smart where one person could run this whole place. So that's huge in our world for time and money and efficiency and whatnot. But um, our, our tanks in there are also kind of unique. They're custom built, but they were accidentally custom built as what's called a universal tank. So you can ferment beer and then carbonate in the same tank, and then you can hold it in there until you're ready to keg it off or do whatever you're gonna do with it. And that's also unique. There's no moving from tank to tank one step at a time, that saves you time, money, chemicals, man hours, everything. Um, so, I mean, the combination of all that stuff, it was just like, how can we not do this, even though, you know, given the circumstances, you don't get many opportunities to walk into a fully functioning brewery and tap room without having to do more than just little things. I mean, in a nutshell, yeah, once we got here and saw the space, it was kind of too good to be true, and. We took the leap and here we are now. So one of the biggest things that drew us to this place was the space, obviously. Uh, you don't get big Bayview windows like this in many breweries that I've ever seen at least, but uh, coming from working in a box all day, this is pretty awesome. Whether it's standing in, you know, running the tap room and watching the, the blizzard go by or the sunset or whatever it is that you're into. Uh, this was our, our once fully functioning tap room. It's kind of on hiatus at this moment in time with to go, but we're very excited to actually be able to utilize this space. We never actually got to operate at full capacity. 50% was the highest that we got to open with. We did walk in here seeing it in what it was before us, and we're really excited to be able to fit 120 people in here, not to mention outside. Uh, we do have big plans for outside. We hope to at least have one, if not two patios outside. This is the room where all the magic happens. Uh, still a big work in progress for where we want it to be, but uh, these four were kind of or designed as our fermenters, and then these four were designed as brights. The kind of cool accidental thing that the person that put this room together did was he actually designed all these tanks with all of the fundamental pieces you need to use them as uni tanks, is what we call them anyways, the universal tanks I talked about. So it's a one-stop shop. Once we brew a beer and get it in this tank, we ferment it in this tank, uh, we cold crash it in this tank, we can carbonate it in this tank, and then it sits here or we keg it off depending on kind of what our needs are at the time. Uh, up here is our brew stand. We're kind of in the middle of doing kegs, so 
got some kegs up here, but this is our mash tun and this is our kettle. So essentially we mash into this tank and then we convert sugars in our grain, so to say. And then as we transfer it into here to boil it, we rinse it. And then that's where we kind of extract everything that we need. And then uh, after we boil it, we get out things that we don't want like proteins. And then uh, essentially we cold crash it through a big heat exchanger that we have over here. And then that's kind of where it ends up in one of these tanks to ferment out. Um, we use a boiler to run our kettle. Uh, it's got a steam jacket. That's kind of the system that we use here. That's kind of what we do here, the endless process of brewing beer and then fermenting it out, kegging it, serving it, so on and so forth. But it's just really nice because it's efficient. So there doesn't have to be three people in here. One person can run this whole place. So our tap list at this moment in time consists of uh, one of the beers that we opened with that was very popular, our cranberry milkshake sour. We kind of kept some of that and brought it back for fun just so that people could enjoy it again. Uh, we have a Hefeweizen, a blonde ale, we have a white stout which is kind of like a coffee chocolate blondish looking beer. It's kind of meant to mess with your head. Uh, an oatmeal stout. We have both a hazy IPA and an American IPA. We have kind of a Kolsch cream ale hybrid. We call it our creamy Kolsch. I would say our Belgian double is the star of our show personally. I think that was a really awesome executed beer. Um, and then we've been doing a lot of special releases through COVID just to kind of keep things fun and interesting for people. Uh, at this moment in time, we have a Pineapple Hefeweizen, which was a really popular beer from when we were open earlier in the year. Things coming up next would be, uh, we have an American Porter. You should see that in the next few days. We've had an Oktoberfest that's been lagering for about two months now. So we're excited to finally have that come out. That should end up being really good. Uh, an Irish Red Ale, which is very much like an Amber Ale should be coming around sooner rather than later. Uh, we do have another batch of higher ABV sours that you should be seeing shortly. And then uh, our big send off to 2020 was the beer that we were most excited about. We called it Hindsight 2020. It's kind of a culmination of things that we learned over the last year and kind of what we want to move into, but it's going to be like a winter spice beer. Uh, it's a winter white wheat ale. Uh, kind of combined with winter spices and then we fermented it with champagne yeast. So it was kind of our like Farewell 2020 beer. My name is Floyd Daniels and I'm Mr. D's Wings and Things, partnering with an effable brewing company. Uh, right now you can order, you can order whole smoked wings. We have fried wings. Uh, when you put your order in, uh, it'll take about 35, 30, 35 minutes for your order to be ready if you're ordering wings. Uh, about 10 minutes for the fried wings inside with the fries and the mac and cheese and the beans. But I like to take my time a little bit on the, on the smoked wings because I like to get that real feeling, that real taste, that, that smell when you open up your box. Or it takes about 30, 35 minutes for me to smoke it and have it hot and ready for you. The last thing I want to mention is you can order all of their beers right online and their food items. So you can have the convenience of just running into the store, picking them up, they have them, they'll have them ready for you. And it's a great way to support your local business. Thanks for listening and check out my other videos now and in the future. Take care.